Hey, so remember I was recently in New York City. I was there to cover a conference, did a bunch of coverage. I hope you've seen it on Bike Portland, photos and stories and videos on social media. So on one Saturday morning, I had to cover an event over in the Williamsburg part of Brooklyn, and I was staying in like the Chelsea Flatiron area of Manhattan at about West 24th Street. So this is kind of the general route I took. Anyway, I thought I would take you across town with me on this ride just to give you a sense of if it's possible or what it's like to actually try to connect up New York's uh, bike infrastructure on a ride like this because it's it's one thing to have a nice protected bike lane project or some other high profile bike project but it's another thing entirely to really see if it works actually see if a tourist can connect from one place to another I mean on on a rainy morning uh, so that's what I set out to do uh, last Saturday so come along with me and see what you think Starting out, I was heading southbound on uh, like Broadway. So the first thing you'll notice is number one, some green paint. There's green paint everywhere in Manhattan and New York's bike infrastructure. Broadway especially is obviously a very marquee street in Manhattan. Check out how pedestrianized it has become. Look at this beautiful uh, different kind of street furniture and planters. Check out the bike racks there integrated into it. They've got not just green, but this other sort of beige color that really sets this off as like pedestrian space. So this is a pretty prime example actually of what the New York City DOT has done to take over Manhattan and take more space for people and not as much space uh, for cars. Regardless of the infrastructure, what you find when you're riding around New York is that pretty much anything goes. People come at you at every direction, whether they be on bike, on foot, skateboard, car, truck, bus, whatever. There's constantly things blocking the bike lanes. This is a pretty sleepy Saturday morning and it's raining, so things aren't quite as hectic as usual. Continuing south on Broadway, I'm coming to Union Square Park here. There was a the big farmer's market was going on at Union Square. In, the, in like a typical weeknight evening, this this square, this bike lane is just just absolutely flooded with people. I'm right here in this uh, pretty nice little two-way bike lane. It's relatively narrow. What I love right here are the uh, armadillo, the little armadillo curbs there on the left that are like zebra stripe. Those are just an added element to, to add protection to the bike lane. As you'll see here, as I cross that street south of Union Square, all of a sudden, the bike lane changes quite a bit. Now, all of a sudden, I'm in a door zone, unprotected, narrow bike lane. I've got cars driving right to my right. I've got people on the left. So we've gone from something that was relatively lower stress and safer to higher stress. Uh, and as you can see, that person there parking in the bike lane doesn't help at all. So big degradation in the bike infrastructure quality here as I make my way south. And again, keep in mind, I don't have like the directions right on my handlebar. I don't have a perfect uh, image of the route in my mind. I'm really just sort of like understanding which way I need to go. And then I'm hoping that the bike network itself can communicate the best way for me to get there following the wayfinding signs, which are actually pretty good in, in New York, I've found. They do have pretty good wayfinding signage for the bike network. And overall, Although the type of bike infrastructure varies wildly from block to block sometimes, and yes, sometimes there's gaps and you're thrown right into the uh, mouth of the wolves suddenly, which can be very startling. For the most part, it's actually connected and you'll at least find some type of bike infrastructure. And the good thing is in New York City is that there are enough people on bikes usually that there's sort of the human infrastructure element kicks in and you end up uh, feeling safe just because you know that there are other bikers uh, on the street with you. So that's always helpful. All right, there's 2nd Avenue. I'm going to pull right into this nice parking protected bike lane. It looks very similar to what we have in Portland, you'll see. I'm um, headed south now towards the Williamsburg Bridge on 2nd Avenue, coming up on East 7th. The design is similar to what we have in Portland. I think New York City does a much better job in daylighting than we do. Uh, look at the, the beige corners there. You'll see one of the biggest dangers I came up on while riding around New York were these turning movements. Look at this left turn across the bike lane here. This big delivery truck doesn't really care that I'm there. It was going to turn anyway and just hope that I adjusted. 
The sad fact is that New York City has lost quite a number of people uh, who were bicycling and were killed in crashes. So it's a really serious issue, even though they've gotten so much, their network has gotten so much better. There's still far too many collisions with bikes and drivers of, of cars and trucks. So as I watch this now, I'm just struck at how tame the traffic is. Saturday, a rainy Saturday morning is definitely not representative of what it's like to ride in, in Manhattan. So I'm coming up. I'm like a block or so away from getting onto the street that's going to connect me over to the Williamsburg Bridge. I thought it was that one, but it wasn't. So I've got to dip back into this. Notice how we've got this nice uh, two-way bike lane again protected from other traffic by a row of parked cars and this buffer zone. This is, uh, again, 2nd Avenue, which I think turns into Christie Ave, headed right next to this park here. This was really pleasant, low-stress bike facility for sure. I'm coming up on Delancey, and when I get to Delancey, I'm going to head east again, uh, and, and I'll be in yet a different type of bike infrastructure. It's going to be like a a, another two-way bike lane, but it'll be connected to the center median with with traffic right next to me on the on the on the adjacent lane. Keep in mind too that I'm a very confident rider. I actually love riding in cities, uh, so take all these things that I'm saying with a grain of salt and understand that everybody's mileage is going to vary in terms of their comfort level on this stuff. Some nice bollards there, which New York City does an okay job of. One thing I love about New York City is they're not afraid to use concrete jersey barriers. I think they could do a ton more to protect, to actually physically protect their bike lanes, but at least at high conflict points, they do use the tall concrete jersey barriers, the kind of which I think Portland really only has like in one spot over on, over on Greeley, and I wish that we would have a lot more of. And the bike lane has turned into a two-way lane, which adds another element of stress because there are people coming at you in the opposite direction. Sometimes they are in going too fast on their e-bikes, you know, 20 plus uh, e-bikes coming at you or even anybody on any type of bike can just add to the stress. I'm headed east on Delancey here and I'm just about to transition onto the Williamsburg Bridge. I was a, I was really unimpressed with the transition onto this bridge. I'm not sure if it's like this to prevent drivers from getting on here, but I just figured a, such an important bridge for biking would have a much easier sort of transition. I had to like skirt right up the little curb there which didn't seem super great. And if it was really crowded with bikes, like on a typical weekday, I think that might be even even tougher to, to make that little transition. So here we are on the Williamsburg Bridge. New York City's doing a better and better job of separating modes when it comes to bikes and walkers. Uh, there are so many of both that, that that is actually a super important design consideration. You'll see the stronger white stripe here to separate uh, walkers and runners from bikers. So I'm going to cut to the other side of the Williamsburg Bridge here because it's really not that exciting. So as we come to the eastern end of the Williamsburg Bridge in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, nice metal bollards there that are retractable, mechanically retractable, it looks like, and transitioning on to this really nice, fully uh, separated two-way bike lane, green paint. We have wayfinding signage, parking protected. And we'll get more into like the neighborhood vibes now that we're outside of Manhattan. Coming around this corner, I look up and I see this big sanitation truck. Not a huge deal since I'm going slow and the truck isn't rumbling through, but that is pretty sketchy. Uh, but like I said, you've just got to be ready for anything in New York City. And I just was able to skirt right by. Luckily, it wasn't too hairy. I'm just going to do a few turns here to get through this little neighborhood these streets are, are so narrow and small that the speeds aren't bad, and so I feel fine just sort of taking the lane, turning onto a, a more standard bike lane here to try to get over to my destination, which is only like a few tenths of a mile away. So this is just a door zone bike lane. Not great, but it's a small street, and if I needed to, I, f I feel like I could swerve over if I needed to, and there's not so much traffic that I'd, I'd feel like I'm putting myself in danger. Coming up onto this like underpass of this major highway, I really didn't like this crossing at all. It's kind of like a non-standard angle, and you can see the bike lane is on the other side of the street there, uh, but there was no crossing treatment at all, and this was a pretty steady stream of cars, and I didn't feel like waiting, so I kind of had to jump through. I like that they put some rocks there at least to maybe prevent drivers from pulling through that space, which I would not put it past to New York City drivers to do if those rocks weren't there. So here we go. I'm getting further out into Brooklyn. And so overall, not too bad. 
a mix of protected bike lanes, pedestrian plazas, uh, door zone bike lanes, uh, bridge paths, neighborhood streets, pretty much the gamut here. There is even a lot more types of infrastructure in New York that you haven't seen here. I'll hopefully put I'll put some of those in another video. But I thought this was like the one time where I put I had the video running basically from start to finish. And I have to say I was able to get to my destination without too much fuss, uh, even though I was new to the area and didn't really know the route too well. There was even, of course, even a city bike dock right to where I was going. So that was nice. So thanks for coming along. I hope you enjoyed this crosstown ride and stay tuned for more uh, videos from my trip to New York. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe.